you. <laughs> this is a fresh week, and I'm sure that um, it's very fresh. We're having spent a very good weekend, and we are here to start um, a new working week. Welcome. My name is Sijama. Do stand by now for the first program we have lined up for your viewing pleasure this morning. Good to have you back. I have uh, Ifani Oguno Ibunam, a public affairs analyst and also a civil society activist, joining me this morning. Good morning, Ifani. Good morning. It's a pleasure being here. Okay. I also have Samuel Ololo. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst and also a program manager of the JDPC, Newi. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Dianambra. It's good to have us once again. Okay, these are the men that will help me look at what the papers are saying in our program press review this morning. Um, let's uh, see how we're going to start now. Okay, we are going to start with our website news. And the first uh, item there says, Anambra State Government inaugurates hydro geological hydrologic mapping. I hope I didn't, I didn't you know, confuse you with that. Okay, Sino, that's Bishop Ibezim, optimistic of new Nigeria. And then Missy Saludo calls for collective action against domestic violence. Anambra State's Local Government Service Commission restates resolve to reform local government system. These are many more other stories coming from our website this morning. So if you go to www.absradiotv.com, you're going to get this, the details of this, and many more anyway. Okay. Oruno, Oguno, Ibunam. Now I need to, go to, need to go to school to get acquainted with this name. Okay, Oguno, Ibunam. Okay, let me start with you. Which of the stories would you like to look at? Domestic violence. Go ahead. Um, over the weekend, there was one trading news of um, a woman and a husband in Awada that virtually be beat up a child living with them to pulp. The face swollen, the back torn, the hand broken, and all what's not. And over time, thanks to the governor's wife and the commissioner for women affairs, who has been responding swiftly to these issues, and it's becoming a daily occurrence. You know, either a child is raped, uh, a child is beaten up to pulp. We don't want to talk about those that are being deprived of going to school just in the name of uh, that are staying with their auntie or uncle or what do you have. And as this goes on, you begin to ask yourself, have parents lost the human kindness in them? Or are they venting their anger on those around them? Because I see no reason why a child of five, six years should be beaten to that level. What did the child do? What is it? And you discover that this happens in homes where the child is staying with either the auntie, the uncle, or is a house help. And it's worrisome. It's really worrisome that you call somebody to be of assistance to you and you end up uh, turning the person to a punching bag. It's wrong. It's unacceptable. And thank God the government of Anambra State is responding swiftly to it. And there is a, um, a court readily available to try any case that has to do with this. You know, these are ways to go. And I use this opportunity to call on all of us. Eh? <laughs> I strongly believe in a reaction and, a, and re, action and reaction. It must happen. You know, let, let's, um, let's know how to accommodate ourselves. If you are tired of the child, send the child back to the parents. Send the child. But we discovered that some of these children were taken from their parents illegally in the name of uh, you know, even the 
the foster parents, so to say, or the guardians, don't even know who the actual parents of these kids are. Uh, it's virtually, I, I, I would have said they, they rented them or they bought them. That's the simple truth from the small uh, investigations we've done. You discover that these kids were brought by somebody to somebody. And sometimes you discover that they may not be the same tribe. They may not even be from the same state. Mm. So it's also an issue that should be looked into because we're talking about uh, human trafficking. There are so many designs and guys of human trafficking. Maybe because it's still small, they stole, it, they stole the child from somewhere. Yeah, that also reminds me of what happened in um, Obaru, where a child was playing and the child was just snapped off from the street. Thank God for social media and all the rest of them. All the traces and everything, the child was discovered in Ogidi. Mm -hmm. They also the one that happened in somewhere, either in Jikoka or Dunukofia, you know, same story and all the rest. So we discovered that some of these kids actually were snapped away. They were stolen, in, in quotes, and trafficked for whatever reason it is. So maybe the person that bought them may not even have known of completely that he bought that child or that the child was so... You know, along the line, when you get tired, you return to whoever. Mm -hmm. And then when you return to... Or you may be calling for the person who brought the child and you will never see the child. So these are the issues that both the state government and the Nigerian police should look into and discover what's happening. Because okay. there are so many guys of human trafficking these days. Okay. And then UBE, universal basic education. Education is a right of any child. The governor's wife should also step up on this issue. Those kids that are hawking as we speak, if you go to the market, you see them. And then I also thank her for clearing the under bridges of uh, Aroma, left the one of um, uh, Thames site that has been turned, the bridge, the pedestrian bridge at Thames site has been turned to a market. Uh, Ocha Brigade and all the rest of them should go and get those people off. We have a lot of markets and that, road, that pedestrian bridge was purely built for human movement to okay, avoid accidents. You. All right, thank you. Um, oh, Lolo, you might want to come in here, please. Okay, for me, I, I would want to uh, commend the state government on the ideological um, step that they have taken. Okay. For me, I think uh, it is high time we begin to appreciate the importance of data gathering because uh, soonest we are currently fully entering into rainy season and Nima has told us about um, the likes of um, flooding, possible flooding that will be coming up again. And it is um, activities like this or programs like this that the government has set in that can really um, further strengthen the information that the citizens receive and um, widen the spread of that information. Uh, we should stop being or uh, we should never allow ourselves to continue to be caught on ways of the things that happen in society. So uh, setting up hydrological or geological um, survey, it's a good one. And, but beyond that, I think the state government should also go beyond um, uh, making sure that it is sustainable. That is what a society is made up of. And uh, in our climb, and this is nothing new compared to developed uh, countries. These are what co developed countries are doing and for the states to begin to think towards that direction is a, is a good one. I uh, just want them to really be up to it and let it not be another commission or agency uh, like the previous ones that have been set up and they are moribund, not really doing why they were set up. All right, thank you. Uh, any other story? And then if we want to look at, uh, we'll have this other one that is talking about uh, uh, Archbishop Ibezin being optimistic about a new Nigeria coming. And then um, the Anambra State Local Government Service Commission restate resolve to reform local government system. So, uh, yeah, that local government that? reform, no local government I, I believe is long overdue. Mm -hmm. uh, we should look into what happens in our local government. How are these local governments wrong? Um, where, do, where do they start looking? Where? where do they start looking at it? I think it's holistic. I think it's holistic because why I say so is that if you get to most of the local governments, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If you get there, you discover that 75% of the departments are moribund. You, uh, a typical example is trying to register a cooperative in most of the local governments, minus the ones in, uh, in the city capitals. The rest are hardly, they have, they, in fact, you hardly see anybody in that office. And if you take a walk to some of the local governments, you discover that some offices 
uh, the volume of dust there tells you that nobody has stepped into that office for a very long while. Then, if it's possible, let there be a proper head count. How many persons work in each local government? Who do we have in this? Minus the functional activities you see in health because of uh, immunization and all that. I was actually going to ask you whether the local government system is still functional at all. That, that's why I said it's holistic. It's going to be a holistic thing. Minus, okay, the health where you, because of the immunization stuff, uh, maybe they, they come around, especially on immunization period. The uh, education secretary and the education department, I don't think anything is happening there. The commerce, is there anything happening there? And all the rest of them, minus the office of the chairman, I can boldly say that the other offices are functional. I yes. don't, I can't boldly say. Works, what are they doing? The governor has said, clean up the gutters, pack the debts out, and he has given them a lot of assignments, in, you know, getting about clean, healthy environment. And you see that they are trying to make it an ad hoc thing. Quam, 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 Packing death, it's, an, it's a continuous thing. Get down the okay now. You will laugh. You will laugh. Even, no, I, even, laugh. even I will not cry. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, you laugh. Because um, you begin to ask yourself, if it's here, uh, down government house, you know, everywhere. And then the way we indiscriminately throw deaths is also another issue. Along the expressway from Mpwele down, you see a well-dressed man with all his senses assumed to be walking, he will park oh. on the road and park his debts by the side of the road. What are we really doing? Oh, his senses are seem to be working. He's well, assumed we are to talking be working about, because uh, if his senses are working, he won't do that. Oh, yeah. Actually, when we are talking about, um, what do you call it, this domestic violence, I was actually going to ask, is it possible, is there any way we'll start looking at the mental health of uh, some people, almost all the people in the society now? There are certain things somebody will do, you begin to wonder, is this person okay? Is this person okay? You know, but then I think it borders on our mental health. Let's continue. Uh, we just have to look at this uh, optimism of the new Nigerian, Samololo. A new Nigeria is possible, but uh, we have to start from the known before we go to the unknown. Mm. Uh, I remember we have always been promised a better future. Uh, Yaradua, the late Yaradua's um, administration, uh, brought up vision 2015 yes uh, good luck started with his own transformational agenda uh, we were promised change so all, all these things i know the designers of these policies and programs they were envisaging a new nigeria when they were coming up with those programs but the the challenge there is to what extent do they follow the implementation of these programs uh, well, uh, in life, I know hope is one of the things that keep us moving. So without hope, then there is no essence of living. Uh, we must continue to hope. Uh, new Nigeria is possible, we know, but it is also dependent clearly on the administrative stride of those in power, uh, be it at the demand side and at the supply side. If everybody is committed and intentionally living their day-to-day -day lives towards trying to achieve that new Nigeria, then we can say that it's possible to attain that. But beyond that, we know that we have what the, the laws of the land says. We know we have different ministries, departments, and agencies. What are their functions? Are they living up to that functions? It will be living in a fool's hiding when um, those who are supposed to train a child or teach a child begin to go on strike and out of three months for for schooling they stay two months uh, because they're on strike and then only just a month and go back to another strike and then we are saying we are telling that new nigeria uh, we are just um, deceiving ourselves uh, it would also be funny if um, we are not making our health uh, systems functional and possibly uh, we are having increased uh, maternal child mortality rates and we are saying we are attaining that new Nigeria. It's, new Nigeria can only be attained, first of all, when as citizens we know that the development of the society lies on our everyday or day-to-day -day life and we all have our inputs to make. If you are not making the policy, ensure that the, in quotes, the services that you are giving are effective or the information you are passing to 
others because you are privileged to get that information is authentic. Without that, uh, we will continue to um, elude ourselves in attaining that new Nigeria. But the truth is, I think we are long overdue to really begin to embrace that new Nigeria because uh, it, it then shows that we are going to move from third world, uh, third country where we have been to second and then first country. And that is the roadmap I'm seeing. But without that, uh, there might be an issue for us. And we, can look, and we have always said less number of times that let us in everything that we do follow the rules of engagement of the country. Otherwise, it will be um, those who are powerful enough will continue to have their ways. And those who can't really speak for anybody or who can't speak for themselves will continue to suffer. For me, that is not the vision of the new Nigeria we want. All right. Thank um, you very much. Um, let's now venture into the papers. Uh, we're beginning with the first paper this morning, which is the Daily Sun. The Daily Sun newspaper. Then a headline there says, Obasanjo blames Nigeria's woes on poor leadership. Obasanjo blames Nigeria's woes on poor leadership. Let's look at the writers there. Three things incoming president must do, Catholic priest. And then church will continue to be beacon of hope. This is coming from Adeboye. And down here, banks, companies, shareholders grown under excessive income charges. Hmm. Or could we have another story of interest? Oh no. So let's move over to the National Star. The new National Star, Senate indicts Justice Ministry over missing 10.4 billion Naira judgment debts. Okay, with the writers there, directs reconstitution of the disbursement committee. And then others, Yunia Buja, Futa, five others, to return to refund 4.7 billion Naira. Mm. Okay, that's all we're taking from here. The Punch newspaper. States paying governor's jumbo pension owe three trillion debt. States paying governor's jumbo pensions owe three trillion debt. Let's see who that owing. The TUC wants governors to pay workers, workers arrears, experts, flare jumbo packages. Okay, they pay, they owe, uh, what do you call it, um, gratuity pensions and gratuity and even regular salaries and then they're paying themselves jumbo salaries. Okay, let's continue. Um, Buhari's failure to rescue Leah Sharab Sharibu disappointing. This is coming from the parents. Okay. I was looking for one story that I saw somewhere. Where did I see that story? Okay, let's continue. The Daily Independent is our next paper this morning. The Senate indicts military over 10.4 billion naira judgment debt. We have seen this story. And then a budget deficit, low revenue responsible for rising debt. Low revenue responsible for rising debt. Okay, gentlemen, let's um, start looking at the stories that uh, we have seen for now. The first one was, uh, we are, I mean, from Delhi, so we are Basanjo blends the uh, Nigeria's war on poor leadership. I don't know when this poor leadership started. Did it start after Basanjo's regime, before or during? Let's look at that story critically, please. Just taking off from where uh, my friend Sam dropped. You know, when we are defining new Nigeria, we have to properly define the new Nigeria because there are a lot of new things. Uh, you have to define new Nigeria. Is it to the positive or new Nigeria to the negative? Mm -hmm. I think we're having a new Nigeria in the positive direction. And then uh, my, our former president is confirming that, uh, blaming it on poor leadership. Then you begin to ask yourself who and who are responsible for this poor leadership. And... Like I do say, we're all casualties, we all cost it. Because the leaders did not come from heaven, neither were they angels. The people that kept Nigeria where they are, are my brothers, your brothers, our, my sisters and your sisters. It's unfortunate that uh, most people see position of leadership as uh, an opportunity to settle themselves to the seventh generation, you know. Well, they forgot one thing that uh, uh, wealth is transient. It, it can vanish any moment. And it's been proven over time that uh, those who touch this world for one reason or the other have also seen that it vanishes off them even before 
they leave this earth. So you begin to ask yourself, are we really thinking the way we ought to think? Or we just um, not reasonable enough to see that uh, we are doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result? How do we lead? Parents. How do you define parenting? Because I look at the family as the nucleus of the society. I look at the family as the origin of existence and life. How do we parent? What is our design about marriage? Do we just marry because we just want to marry? What, getting married, both male and female, what are your intents? Then the society themselves also have a part. But I also understand that the society is a collection of various families. What is our design about life and existence? You know? You know, and you don't, and, and I see these days, okay, over the weekend there was a debate in Obunike where some Obunike indigenous pulled together and everybody was telling the youth that, look, money is interesting, very good. But we also look at how did this person make this money. Very important. Until we begin to catch these youths young and reorient them because the society has made them believe that and this has driven a lot of youths to my boutique my okite and all the rest of them do we where are our uh, uh, voluntary organizations where these kids, okay, outside what you hear from your parents, you get involved in voluntary organizations who also will teach you discipline, patriotism, obedience to law and order, what law and order is all about. They're all gone. Where is the Boy Scout, the Boys Brigade and all the rest of them? They're all gone. And even the few that manage to exist, the parents will never allow their child to get involved. Rather, I am going to have DSTV. So these are the issues. So how... Do we, you know, recruitment of leadership? How do we recruit leadership? What do we call leadership? Is it all about amassing wealth? What about good name that we say is better than riches and gold? All these are issues. The church itself is not so helping anymore. Uh, you go to church, the uh, prosperity, prosper, very beautiful. I don't have issues with it. But we also know that the same Bible also tells us that godliness is a great gain and contentment is great gain. Where is the contentment? Where is that godliness? Where is that uh, going the extra mile in anything you want to do? Where is the love that's being preached? How okay. do we, where is the repentance and all the rest of them? So the society itself, it's, it, we, we, we've just diverted our attention, pursuing shadow. And uh, no thanks to capitalism, which we are all pursuing, you know, you know, there's no more communal, nothing is holding all of us together anymore. Even in the villages, nothing. Absolutely nothing. But where Elesigolana? Even our board doesn't exist. A boy is not a social club. A boy is not a social club. Because their, their relevance in the society is, is long gone. On where does he feed Jicola and Yon? On your bona, Poloba Golongue, on your bona, I wasn't Bonisi only. Even brothers and sisters had this thing to discuss because the father will respect whoever that has money in the house. Why, you are now come where they are not? You tell me, no, no, you're in Chalen, there is no say, it but a canoe, go ever, or a calaboria, but I be maybe a no one, go be a teacher mocho. You forgot that the person who is poor today can be rich tomorrow. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Senate Dice Justice Ministry over missing 10.4 billion naira judgment debt. Um, Sam, I'm coming to you. I don't know why. <laughs> why now? Uh, it, did it just start today? Uh, why that? That they they they, they are winding down to hand over to the new uh, uh, new regime. Well, the thing is, I know this um, story has really lingered. Uh, even the uh, Minister of Justice mm -hmm. um, Malami has denied this um, claim severally and the Senate indicting um, them 
still it's nothing new. This is the country where we have been over successive administrations. And the question is, why is it that those who are in public offices misuse or abuse that office? It's not one, it's not twice, it has been a regular occurrence. And it's not one person that is doing this. Different ministries have their different stories. Sometime in the past, we heard of NDDC, sometime we've heard of custom, we've heard of the police. Now, even those who are expected to, in quote, who, have, who we have always known to be learned, those who we have always revered, now being indicted by, uh, for 10.4 billion naira. Now the question is, how much is 10.4 billion naira? How many healthcare facilities will it really fix? And we are even talking about, um, if you come to the justice system, we are talking about uh, poor dispensation of justice. And when you ask them, they will tell you sometimes um, access to funding, sometimes access to uh, things as little as repairing the vehicles that they need to transport inmates to the, to the court. But here we are, somebody, a ministry, misappropriating. 10.4 billion naira. And the question is, it is not just, it, it becomes worrying because it's not just um, regular whistleblowers who are saying this. If it is whistleblowing, we could begin to see if it is true or not. If it is whistleblowing, we could begin to ask what is the intent of the person who is blowing this whistle, regardless. But this is the Senate that is indicting this ministry. Beyond indicting them, I think it is high time for Nigeria to begin to, uh, to enhance the reward and, and um, uh, sanction system. We cannot continue to hear people who should, who with trust, because when at every electoral system we elect a president, it is expected that that president would build up a team of persons that would work with him. So, at that election, the citizens have said, we want you to go there and represent us. Every other person or persons that that person brings up is still hinged on that mandate that has been given to that individual. Now, the question is, why is it that these people who are supposed to work for public good continue to amass this wealth? We don't see anything significant that they have done. Sometimes, politically, we try to cover it up. And it keeps happening without them, nothing tangible happening to them. That means there's something completely wrong with the system. Compare, and this, politically, we try to cover it up. And then the other that, is called, that has gone to Abuja, Uni Abuja and Futu, and then five others to return for 4.7 billion naira. Do you see them doing that? Because I'm sure such others have gone in the past to other institutions, asking them to refund. Uh, funny enough, we also know of um, currently some uh, the then uh, uh, governors who were indicted over certain issues. Uh, EFCC called them up. Now, some of them are now senators, wanting to become Senate president. So it is not new for us. The question is, it is very, very funny and appalling as a society that we continue to promote different. We continue to promote people who, instead of using public good for pu uh, public resources for public good, decide to amass that wealth for themselves and for whoever that they want to amass it for. It is, it is a good call telling them to refund it. But beyond that, I think we need to begin to look at the, the holistic nature of our society. Why would you embezzle it in the first place? Why would you? And what if you don't you? return it, what will happen to you? Because those people that did not return in the past, nothing happened to them. That is why I said we need okay. to look at the structure of the society. And beyond that, we have ministries, we have departments, we have agencies who should really ensure that the resources of the citizens are properly used. If they are all sleeping or they are complicit, then things will continue to spoil. And it is not for the interest of the nation. Now, we have been thrown into debt. We can barely, we keep going into different levels of economic recession and we are asking what is the problem. Um, mothers are dying, children are dying, poverty are breaking up. But you don't know that if the right resources are used justifiably, some of these things would not really happen. I think that's the same thing that Obasanjo was trying to say, that the problem of Nigeria is leadership. I agree okay, with you. Because and it just appear we are directionless. I know? agree and with you. And just come in and do anything you like and you get away with it. But that, but that is the truth. When he True was that. talking about, that my co-analyst, when he was talking about the citizens being complicit too, for me, I think we have been very, very harsh on the citizens because 
uh, it's more like as a society we have agreed what we want to do we now have people who should channel that course for us so the responsibility lies on them why the citizens follow if they have failed the question is how can a mob which we know takes a longer period of time to really come up organize themselves and drive a change but when the people have uh, uh, voted you in or is it in uh, appointed position or elected position if you fail take that responsibility take responsibility that's very important okay that's the story i was looking for um if i show kuti surrenders to police today six fallen sisters as some of us are asking is it because you know you have fallen that you just stand up and slap a police officer in uniform well that was um, dreaded last weekend sorry to say this good readers to bad rubbish okay the police that meant to protect me and you are being assigned to individuals so when you have them at your beck and call, you can do anything you like. Then secondly, Mapu will say dress the way you want to be addressed. The police should give themselves honor. They should give themselves honor. You see a policeman who is assigned to this so-called VIP, vagabonds in power. Really? Yeah, is that what it means? Uh, okay, is that not the, uh, the right thing? I, I don't know, I've not heard that one. But they call them VIP. Yeah, VIP. I mean, here very VIP. important person. Okay, very important. I thought he was vagabonds in power. And then you see a policeman assigned to these people with left hand holding his gun and with the right hand helping the madam to carry bag. I mean, when you belittle yourself to the extent you have no honor, that's what you deserve. And then also, you ask yourself, these policemen, you know, you know, when you see some of them, you just bought pity. You just bought pity. Then, does it give you right as a citizen to now have the moral courage, the impetus to raise your hand upon an officer of the law? Talk more. And he said I, he has been doing that. Why is this one special? So, that's, that's the what issue. He said. That this is not the first person. You see, when asked, an issue comes why up, why is this? And special? Special? If that's why we should give credit to social media. Perhaps he has been doing that and nobody has been able to you take know, it. If, 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 if an media. issue comes up and is dealt with mm. and given the necessary attention, you know, if being sat with any boom, you just allow these issues to grow up and grow up. What will make somebody look at somebody who is putting on a uniform? The uniform is an authority, and you raise your hand not minding what the situation is but also the police also slap recklessly the way they like as well so sometimes you see that what goes around comes around okay let's let's look at other stories and then talk about uh, what's going on in the uh, tent assembly okay the next paper that we're going to look at this morning um have we seen this okay we're seeing this uh, the this day newspaper this day newspaper please uh, Babi reaches out to a great senator select uh, that's what we'll have coming from these days as well as the banner headline with the writer there pledges tents nas will pursue pro business legislation samwa olu backs at babu jibrin and then receives the senators electing lagos urges inclusion in choice of presiding officers all these are coming under the story at babu reaches out to agree with senator select and they stay in newspaper outgoing governors come in validatory session today okay that's all we're taking from there let's look at the nation newspaper tinubu is best prepared ever for president says akonde okay any writer there expect a 50-year master plan from incoming administration hmm. what to do on economy okay we import foods wines spirits clothing perfume body sprays toothpicks and the toiletries and then turn around to complain that the naira is not strong okay all these are coming under that story that tinubu is best prepared ever for president and i think that's all we're taking from there let's look at the garden it's best 17 years after paris club relief a standard debt uh rises to 41.8 billion naira i would like to merge it with one story that i saw somewhere um i don't know where did i see that story now okay 
let's keep rolling okay that's the only story i'm taking from here okay let's see what um i may say i meet criticism at my view why this consultations okay we've seen that story and then from the last paper we have here there is some um, the daily trust who we'll have this other story baskets of tomato cost 70,000 naira in the south and then there are riders there that say uh, prices triple in lagos fct Kano, rivers enugu others and then housewives resort to pests and dried varieties farmers blame pest attacks production cost okay on production cost okay that's it apc zoning threat to national assemblies independence aggrieved aspirants ceo says this okay i've not seen that story that i'm looking for don't worry when i see it but let's let's look at what's going on in the intent assembly uh, babio hasn't been the anointed candidate for for the senate president and then uh, with this other guy what's his name idris for the other side okay what do you say he's reaching out for other senators maybe for uh, for a kind of alliance, please don't worry that it has gotten to me. Let's see how we can work together. Well, well politically, that is what is expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for me, I, I, I was just wishing that we are in a country where um, our leaders obey rule of law. I, I was also wishing we are in a country where we already have structures, systems, that regardless of what you are or what you do, uh, the institutions are already strengthened to ensure stability. Uh, if, if, if only we were at that level, then it would have been interesting who they meet because no matter what they do, it would just be mere positions that they are trying to get that will still resort to maybe further helping the citizens. But unfortunately, I see all what they are doing, which is political and not bad, uh, a, a man is a man has the right to aspire to whatever level he wishes to and then you cannot achieve that alone you need to consult you need to reach out you need to uh, make alliances uh, and forge alliances that are very very strong to achieve what you want to achieve as the case may be and that is what he's doing we have no issue with that but uh, it's it is an interesting time because we know the eighth assembly also had similar quabble uh, that emerged, that saw Saraki emerge as the Senate president. And we know how it happened before the current night assembly that I agree that regardless of what they would say have been their successes that they have to the bills that they have passed, they not really do well. Uh, because uh, we are in a society and a society is the embodiment of both laws, policies, programs of the government. And uh, we are expecting that uh, the tenth assembly uh, whoever wins it would go beyond self-interest and begin to push public interest. Uh, we cannot say things are working in the country and we will continue. For how many years now we have remained the uh, world uh, poverty capital? For how many years? For how many years now the number of um, children out of school keeps increasing? For how many years now we are talking about farmers, we are talking about um, food insecurity and the government that is supposed to do something about it that they are doing absolutely nothing they cannot tell me that they are working or they're doing anything and when you look at it uh, things are not really improving and you want us to accept that they are really working but uh, when they blow their trumpets they say they are doing well well it is for the citizens to really uh, after they have said what they have done to to say to affirm what they have done if it is good or not but for me and then when you go to the streets you would hear citizens really complaining bitterly and the government should understand that there are executive, legislative, and, uh, and judiciary um, um, arms. So the question now is, why should the legislative be consulting the executive? These are the issues that are fundamentally wrong in the mm. country. Well, for political reasons, it can happen. But it is not, it is not supposed to make headlines as it is making headlines. We also saw somewhere where they're saying that uh, the absence of... Uh, uh, um, Tinubu in the country has taught the um, the game, uh, the what they're doing in the, I mean, the choice of uh, who is going to take what in the national so, assembly. So, so if 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 my knowledge of history um, serves me right, I understand that these three organs of the government are almost equal and independent. So the question is, why should uh, those who are going for the leadership of the of the legislative be hobnobbing, pleading with those at um, with the executive 
and you think with those kind of conversation and dialogue that they are having, they are not having trade-offs. They are not um, selling off some of their, um, what would I put it? I, I know that there are concessions that they are going to make. And it is going to further dampen their power to make policies, especially when it is for the interest of the citizens against the interest of the government, which is the executive. But if, the, if that person that is the Senate president or the leadership, the leadership of the National Assembly was really um, anointed, as we have always known in Nigeria, by the executive, we know that sometimes they would easily want to let some things go. And the country will continue to suffer for it. Okay. As against when he's ele elected by the House themselves. Okay, let's see. Set up petitions World Bank over Buhari's fresh 800 million naira loan. And a whole lot of analysts who have been asking, what is this man going to do with an $800 million loan and when he has just a few days to stay in office? Just like so many other people, so many other governors that are doing a whole lot of things that are not supposed to be, especially when they are ready to leave. I'm coming to you fine. Yes. You married that with the 17 years after Paris Club relief. External debt rise to 41 point eight billion. Okay. I don't have issues with the fund, mm. the amount. I have issues with where we are being faced with dwindling revenue base because our revenue base has been narrowed to the point that we are now relying 90 percent on oil and then we're also having challenges in even you know getting the oil together to sell via the cases of bunkering and all the rest of them. And what do you expect when this is the first time, let it be on record, that this is the first time a Senate president is being known before the election and inauguration of the House? Normally, you see aspirants until on that day, the gimmicks and whatever plays out and somebody is thrown up. As we speak, this is the first time the party, the majority party is not just zoning, but are also fixing names. It has never happened before. No, it has always been that case. No, you hear a name on the background, but nowhere a name is penciled. Benjamin, Emmanuel, Musa, for this. What is okay, the but, essence but of the... I would actually like us to look at this loan, this 800 That is where the whole issue starts, because, when, because the, when, the, when the legislative arm becomes a rubber stamp, mm -hmm. Whatever comes from the executive is not looked They will pass it. Yes, no. That's just it. We should not separate the cost from the casualty. They are together. Because if there are no cause, there shouldn't be a casualty. So apart from what, this, what Seraph is saying now, is there no other way it's, to stop this guy? It's not possible. Because they get the house, they must pass it. You can't do no jack. Nothing you can do because what is required is for the assent of the National Assembly. And I know before in. now that in some states the governors that are leaving that some incoming governors have started warning if you give loan to this young man that's leaving, I'm not going to pay it. I know it happened he in Canada and some other, some other states. At that point, he's still he's a spectator. Governor select are warning. He's only 11 players. He's only 11 players that is in the field. Even the coach is a spectator. The majority of the crowd in the stadium contributes n virtually nothing to the possible outcome of the match. And what is the possible outcome of the match? The executive and the legislator are together on a platform. Do this for me. End of story. Because I put you there. So there's no possible... The outcome is known. The possible outcome is known. No matter how we shout and cry, you may be surprised that even if it's a night to go, it will be approved. And don't be surprised that this money we have even been borrowed awaiting approvals for expenditure. And then what is the expenditure? What is the, what, I mean, under what subheads are these monies going to be spent? Me I, and you can never know. I don't know. So that's the issue. If we must get it right, there must be a proper check. If there are no proper check, and I, I will use the opportunity to beg the National Assembly, especially the opposition party, that you people have a good number, you can make a change. Surprise them on that day. Do the needful. That change is, their thoughts. That's a change their line in, action. The 10th assembly. The 10th assembly coming in. You have a good number that they don't have an overwhelming majority. So you have the chance to make changes and then write your name in gold. Mm -hmm. They give you who you don't want. Be bold and courageous enough, at least for once, to say, we can't take this. Okay. And this is where it starts. 
right. this is an opportunity and to the outgoing tenth assembly my brother <laughs> I was you coming back to the society. I like what happened in this election. Most of the governors are coming home. They are not going to the National Assembly. So we all meet in the streets. Eh? The, the dungeon with dog, we will all stay inside of it. Thank you. Sam. Okay. Now, Just briefly, one minute. Let's go. Talking, like, talking on the loan, I know this case about uh, assessing loan has lingered for a long time. And that conversation even actually started as a rider to uh, what is it called subsidy removal mm -hmm. and currently the government that the federal government through the ministry of finance use to the of yes I, we, they are now saying that they might likely not even remove the subsidy anymore as so why, so the why is it going ahead to collect this money so it, it, that is to make you understand that there is no cohesion between the ministries the department the agencies now, the executive, the legislative, the judiciary, the local government, the state, state government, government, the federal government, and then the society as a whole. People just do things as they so wish. Uh, I want to see a country where we have succeeded in tying the fabrics of our nations together so that even the driver out there who thinks the decisions he's making doesn't matter would know that even five naira increase that he has put in his fare would, would affect the woman who has gone to Otupo in Benue State to buy food. Till we understand that fabrics, to understand the nexus between what we do at the streets, what the, the policies and programs of the government are at the, at the top of uh, HLON, then we will continue to kill ourselves and, and we will continue to complain. All right. Thank you very much. Samuel Lulu, public affairs analyst and also um, the manager of JDPC, Newi Program Manager. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, and Ifani Oguno Ibunam, a public affairs analyst too, and also a civil society activist. Thank you for coming, Ifani. It's a pleasure being here, and I advise, be the change you want to see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all uh, for press review this morning. If you enjoy what you watch today, Remember to join us early tomorrow morning for a fresh package. My name is Sijama. Do stand by for other programs coming your way.